welcome to the Living Waters Christian Center. Here is Pastor Robert Brown. Was. And then God gave me this message, uh, a message I had done before, but this is going to be updated today. Amen. Hallelujah. To kind of, to not kind of, to encourage me to not only keep going forward, but to go forward with understanding, to go forward with an assurance that he is on the job. Amen. I guess I was in a dry place, and I didn't quite understand how I had gotten there. Amen. And what he revealed to me was you have entertained the worldviews, the opinions, the takes of everyone around you. And you have put, and you have been down on the worldwide church and its ability to win the masses to Christ. Because I felt like there was no hope any longer because I was looking at people. Even me, I was looking at people and I'd taken my eyes off of the Lord. And in response to that, he reminded me of what I'm about to share with you right now. Amen. So we're coming out of Luke 1. And 37, I'm reading from the Amplified Classic Version. Amen. This is Gabriel's response as he's talking to um, to Mary, the mother of Jesus. And he's let her know that she's going to have a child. And she says, she responds to him, uh, how can that be, as I've not known the man. And he talks about the Holy Spirit overshadowing her. And... Uh, uh, he goes on to say that Elizabeth uh, was in her advanced age, and she is six months pregnant now. And then he goes on to speak about the scripture I'm going to share with you today. Amen. And it reads, for God, for with God, nothing is ever impossible. Let me read that one more time. For with God, nothing is ever impossible. Hallelujah. Do you believe that? Hallelujah. And no word from God shall be without power or impossible of fulfillment. Hallelujah. Let me read that again. For with God, nothing is ever impossible. We got to get that into our minds, into our spirits. Amen. Hallelujah. For with God, nothing is impossible and no word from God shall be without power or impossible of fulfillment, amen. I had gotten to a point, amen, when I would, took my eyes off of him somehow. I was distracted by the activities of a man, hallelujah, glory to God. And I forgot that with, with God, is nothing is impossible. Now, this is in the case of salvation, amen, hallelujah, glory to God. So much going on. But what I really forgot, hallelujah, the biggest part that I forgot, amen, is that salvation is a miracle. We were good doing what we were doing. We had no thought about God. We were caught up in our sin. We were doing our thing. And God, in his grace and his mercy, enacted a miracle upon us that we might get saved. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. That it, w although we were stuck in our worldview, hallelujah, and we were justifying the sin the best we could. God in his mercy, hallelujah, performed a miracle in us, and we were saved, amen. And if he can do it for us, why can't he do it for Amityville? Why can't he do it for Long Island? Why can't he do it for New York City? Why can't he do it for millions upon millions, if not billions, across the world. So with that in mind, amen, hallelujah, message today. Next slide, please. Amen. Nothing is impossible with God. When you find yourself in a dry place, when you find yourself frustrated about what happened and what did not happen in your life yet, hallelujah, when you find yourself really looking at people and your eyes are off God, amen, it's about a refocus on God and understanding that nothing is impossible with God. Hallelujah. We all get into these dry, I shouldn't, I can't speak for you, but many of us get into these dry places. We take our eyes off of 
God and all his goodness and all that he can do. Amen. Glory to God. And hallelujah. For example, hallelujah. Glory to God. It's a great big vision God's given me for this church. Amen. Hallelujah. But it's not going to be through human means. Amen. It's going to be through the power of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. How does God take a small number of people and do a big thing? Well, he's, he's done it throughout the scriptures. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He saved the world through eight people. Hallelujah. On a, on a boat. Hallelujah. A big boat. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He used Gideon and a small band of people. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. To win a victory for Israel. Hallelujah. He took this small nation. Amen. Hallelujah. And had them uh, and pulled them out of Egypt. Amen. And placed them into the promised land. Amen. There is nothing impossible. Hallelujah. With God, hallelujah. God wants to encourage us today. He wants to build us back up today. Hallelujah. And this is basically my testimony today. Amen. How he re-encouraged me. Take your, take your eyes off people and keep them focused on me because with me, nothing is impossible. Hallelujah. Is anybody going through in here? Is anybody in a, a difficult place? Is anybody in a dry place? Is anybody going through the motions of Christianity and you're not quite sure amen hallelujah what's going on amen i'm getting up i'm going to church amen but i don't have that fire amen god wants to reignite the fire that's in us amen hallelujah he wants to bolster our faith amen hallelujah he wants to encourage us hallelujah not to just hallelujah uh just operate in the normal everyday christianity amen but that the impossible is possible with him somebody say hallelujah so join me amen as i pray hallelujah and we invite the lord amen to preach and teach today hallelujah father god we come before you in the matchless name of jesus we thank you and praise you for bringing us out today lord god even in this heat we thank you for a wonderful place to come and to gather to assemble lord god to hear a word from you lord god hallelujah in the name of jesus but father god this task you've given me is far far too great for me you are the preacher you are the teacher teach today preach today like never before and we won't fail to give you all the praise the glory and the honor because you do all things well in Jesus' name let somebody say amen amen hallelujah next slide please let's look at some definitions real quick real quick amen gabriel said to Ma uh, mary that for with god nothing is impossible amen hallelujah so that word for amen is a uh, Greek word, since we're coming out of the New Testament, it's kati, hallelujah, it means it's causative, this word is causative, or because, hallelujah, or uh, uh, he's giving you the why, hallelujah, glory to God, in this case for her, why she will have a baby, hallelujah, without being married, amen, hallelujah, because the Holy Spirit would overshadow her, hallelujah, glory to God, hallelujah, God for our individual situations, amen, will give us the why, hallelujah, he is the why, hallelujah, he is the cause, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah, and the word with, hallelujah, it's a para in the Greek, amen, it means close beside, it's typical theologically and theologically significant, it usually adds the overtone from close besides, implying an intimate participation, that God will have an intimate participation, hallelujah, in the miracle he wants to bring about in your life from the Lord by divine agency or by the power at God's command. Hallelujah. We must understand as Christians, amen, we are new creatures, amen, hallelujah, that, that the spirit of the Lord, a portion of him, hallelujah, lives inside each of us, hallelujah, and that we're, and we're going through, he's there with us, amen, hallelujah, but he's in us, hallelujah, to continue to encourage us and build us up, hallelujah, and as we allow him, amen, hallelujah, uh, we will, uh, as we allow him to, the power of God by way of the Holy Spirit will move through us, amen, hallelujah, and bring about a change in our lives. Sometimes we forget that God lives inside of us, and as a result, we're a new type of being, hallelujah, we're no longer a being, amen, that finds our ancestry solely in Adam, amen, but we now find it in Jesus Christ, hallelujah, glory to God. And we're candidates for the impossible, hallelujah, glory to God. We're candidates for the impossible, hallelujah, 
we are ca- our, 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 our very walk, our salvation is a miracle. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I remember growing up in the church, amen, my mother taking me to Massapequa Tabernacle and then eventually bringing me here, amen, hallelujah, and I was experiencing my salvation through, I was experiencing salvation through her eyes and through her experience, amen, but there came a point where I had to get to know the Lord for myself, amen. Now, my obstacles were, I thought the world was so much bigger than God, amen, hallelujah, I thought my friends and their opinion was so much bigger than God. I thought the morality and the activities of the world was so much bigger than God. I had to investigate. I went to Nation of Islam meetings in college. Hallelujah. I went, I, I, you know, I, I investigated, amen, what is the truth? And God in his mercy cr- caused a miracle in my life where I got saved. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Despite me looking at all these other things hallelujah the miracle happened amen i got saved the miracle happened you got saved hallelujah for nothing is impossible with god hallelujah what is this nothing amen hallelujah uh gabriel's talking about here amen uh it's ooh the word is ooh in the greek amen hallelujah and it means no not objectively negates a statement uh, ruling it out as fact. So it's ruling out the impossible as fact. Hallelujah. That's what this word is saying. Nothing. Hallelujah. It's saying the impossible is uh, being changed into the possible with God. And the word impossible hi- here, hallelujah, is a another Greek word at unateo. Hallelujah. I know I mangled that one. Hallelujah. But it means to be able, to be unable. A thing cannot be done from God. No word shall be without power. Amen. Hallelujah. So, it, so nothing shall not be able to be done. And in the case of salvation, amen, we got saved. Hallelujah. Glory to God. There's some of us that have loved ones that got saved. There's others of us still praying for those loved ones. And hallelujah, we should continue to pray, continue to be a good example in front of them. Amen. Hallelujah. And they will get saved. We continue to be a good example before Amityville. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And God will fill this church. Amen. Hallelujah. As we continue in the fire of God and believing that with God, nothing is impossible. You know, if I look around and look at the chairs that are empty, I can get discouraged. If I look at the world and everything that's happening, all the people that are dying and all the world views and all the gender choices people are making and all the financial choices they're making and all how people are attacking marriage, amen, I could get down. Hallelujah, glory to God. And I did get down. Hallelujah, glory to God. But God in his grace and mercy, got me refocused on him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Even being ordained, amen, I'm still human. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's move on. Hallelujah. Nothing is too hard for God. Hallelujah. Think about the hardest thing that's going on in your life, the most difficult thing that's going on in your life right now. I'm here to share with you today, by way of the Holy Ghost, that nothing is too hard for God to solve. Hallelujah. I really want you to think about that big obstacle in your life right now. Hallelujah. Nothing is too hard for God. A lot of time what happens is we believe it's too hard for God. We come about with our plan, amen. We get in the way, and when God and we work, God rests. When we rest and allow God to do it, he works. Hallelujah. So let's take a look at it. Next slide, please. We come in out of Genesis 18, 14. This is with uh, Abraham. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. And I believe and other scholars believe that Jesus himself, the pre-incarnate Jesus, came to Abraham. Hallelujah. And visited him at the plains of Mamre. Hallelujah. If I'm pronouncing it correctly. Hallelujah. And let's read what Jesus said to him. Amen. Hallelujah. This is prior to uh, Sodom and uh, uh, Gomorrah being destroyed. Uh, the free incarnate Christ says, is anything too hard or too wonderful for the Lord? Now he's referring to Sarah becoming pre- pregnant in her old age. Uh, hallelujah. Anybody past a certain age that's looking to be pregnant right now? I'm just teasing. 
I'm just teasing you. Everybody's looking at me. <laughs> ah, yeah, no, Pastor, I don't want that. Hallelujah. I'm fine. Hallelujah. I didn't raise my kids. I'm good. Hallelujah. I'm living my life right now. Hallelujah. I know I was in the minivan for 20 years. Hallelujah. Now I got a car here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So is anything too hard or too wonderful for the Lord? At the appointed time when the season for her delivery comes around, I will return to you and Sarah shall have born a son. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Jesus, in his pre-incarnate form, he appeared unto Moses, amen, and said, your wife's going to have a baby. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And we know that child turned out to be Isaac. Amen. Hallelujah. Laughter. Hallelujah. Because she laughed within herself like, <laughs> and he called her on it. We're not going to read that right now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But nothing is too hard for God. Hallelujah. We know these scriptures. Amen. This is an encouragement. Amen. This is a reminder. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I did this back in March. Amen. But he wanted to remind us again that nothing is too hard for him that that debt that you're in hallelujah nothing is too hard for him hallelujah that person you've been praying for to get saved nothing is too hard for him hallelujah that depression that you're going through nothing is too hard for god that child you've been praying for over and over again nothing is too hard for god hallelujah glory to god next slide please Man's impossible is God's possible. Man's impossible is God's possible. You know, it's impossible that this person gets saved I've been praying for. It's impossible that this church is going to grow and accomplish what God would have it to accomplish. Amen. In, in, in regards to winning souls to Christ. Hallelujah. It's impossible for this. Impossible for that. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And for from a man's standpoint, we would be correct from us to change it. Yes, it would be impossible. Hallelujah. But what's impossible for us is God's possible. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Next slide, please. We're coming down to Luke 18, 24. This is the account where the rich young ruler, amen, came to Jesus and tried to say, I'm going to heaven because I'm a good person. I follow the Ten Commandments. I'm going to heaven. Hallelujah. And Jesus said, sell all that you have, uh, uh, give it to the poor, and come follow me. Hallelujah. The young man could not do that. He broke the first commandment. Hallelujah. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him alone shalt thou worship. Amen. Hallelujah. He was more concerned about his money. Amen. Hallelujah. Than following God in the flesh. Hallelujah. That was right there. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And... The scripture gives you the sense that the people that lived at that time in Israel had a little paper. They had a little bit of money. Hallelujah. So they were struggling with, because uh, Jesus said to them, it's, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to be saved. And, and they had a negative response from that. They had some money. Hallelujah. They, they, were, they were concerned about that. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Jesus' statement in the Jesus Hallelujah went on to say this in Luke 18, 24 through 25. When Jesus saw this, he said, how hard is it for a rich, for the rich to enter to the kingdom of God? In fact, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter into the kingdom of God. Next slide, please. Hallelujah. Let's go to verse 26. Those who heard this said, then who in the world can be saved? This is an indication that the people that heard this had some money. Hallelujah. Matter of fact, they might have been rich. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's go to the next slide, please. Verse 27 says, he replied, what is impossible for people is possible with God. Hallelujah. So with God, it's possible for a camel to go through an eye of a needle. Hallelujah. In other words, he was using an allegory, an extreme example. Hallelujah. But what he's really saying, amen, hallelujah, it is possible for a rich man to be saved. Amen, hallelujah. Matter of fact, it's, it, it's possible for any man, any woman, hallelujah, glory to God, to be saved. It is a miracle. Salvation is a miracle. We deserve hell, hallelujah, but, he, but uh, Father God gave us Jesus. Hallelujah, glory to God. In the case of all of us here, amen, we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, and thus, we receive salvation. Amen. We will live forever. Hallelujah. 
Lord God, let me stay there for a second. Do you believe you have eternal life? <laughs> it is a major part of your salvation to know that you have eternal life right now, that my soul will not die. My soul will not be separated from God. Amen. My body will dissolve. Hallelujah. And thank God one day we'll get a new body. Amen. Hallelujah. But eternal life started. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The moment we said yes to the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. We have eternal life and that is a miracle. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It was hallelujah. He replied, what is impossible for people is possible with God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Once again, I want you to think about that impossible in your life. Hallelujah. It's impossible for you, but with God, hallelujah, it is possible. Hallelujah. Glory to God. When we get discouraged, when we uh, go into despair, when we're frustrated, amen, hallelujah. When, hallelujah, sometimes we disappear from church for weeks on end because we're so dis dis distressed or in despair. We're looking at people, amen. We're, we're taking in the information from people, amen, and it's just sullying in our spirit, amen, hallelujah. Hallelujah, we got to look back to God. Hallelujah, what is impossible with man is possible with God. Hallelujah. There are some times we got to draw away from the negative people. Amen. Hallelujah. We need to spend time, or, or people in general, and we got to get back to spending time with God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If we're drawing all of our encouragement, all of our life's lessons, all of how we think, feel, and act, from people that we are around and it's not in alignment with God. There are times and seasons we got to pull away from people and we got to spend some time with the Lord. Hallelujah. To, to be reinvigorated, hallelujah, with the, uh, the thinking that is in line with God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, brother, pastor, I don't like to be lonely. Well, you won't be lonely. You'll be with the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord of God, I don't like to be lonely either, amen, hallelujah, that's why I'm glad the Holy Spirit lives inside me, hallelujah, glory to God, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. Next slide, please. Jesus unveils his power over the impossible, in this case, death, to Martha, hallelujah, glory to God. See, it's not just enough to talk about it, he had to show it, hallelujah, glory to God, hallelujah. Next slide, please. Going to John 11 and 21. Now, to give you the context of the scripture, amen, Jesus was good friends with a man named Lazarus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And this story is only in the gospel of John. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And this man lived in Bethany, which was close to Jerusalem. Amen. And he would stop there and stay at his house and he you know, uh, some of the writings of Josephus would talk about, uh, Josephus was a, um, a Jewish historian. He would talk about how Jesus and Lazarus would spend time on the rooftop of the house and just fellowship, and they were friends, amen. And now Lazarus, di Lazarus dies, amen, and Jesus delays his coming before he goes to see, to see Lazarus. Lazarus. Um, the in the Jewish mentality, the spirit of a human being hovered around their body for three days. So what did Jesus do? He waited four days before he goes to see Lazarus. And let's read what happens here with this account. Amen. Uh, Lazarus had two sisters, Mary and Martha, that he lived with. And here Jesus is talking with Martha. And, is, and he says, then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. Because she believed in that three days of the spirit being around, hallelujah, the body. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. So here she, she's, she's kind of showing where her mentality is. She didn't recognize Jesus as God. All right. She, she's seeing him as some type of prophet at this point. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Jesus saith unto her, thy brother shall rise again. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, I want you guys to put yourself in Martha's position. If you're like me, you've had loss in your life. You've had close people to you that have passed away. Hallelujah. Imagine Jesus coming to you and saying, and you in your despair and you're upset and you, 
you know, you, you're going through your depression and all that, and Jesus comes up to you and says that your loved one will rise again. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, being a human being, we might be like, well, really? For real? You know, because we're not looking at the impossible. We're looking at just what we know from our life's experiences. Amen. Let's go on and, and see what Jesus says. Hallelujah. Look at next slide, please. Verse 24. Martha saith unto, saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection. She got religious. Well, he's going to rise again in the resurrection. And at the last day, and Jesus, hallelujah, he, he cuts right in. He said, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection. Hallelujah. This is an announcement that I'm God. I'm God. I am the resurrection and the life. I'm the source of life. I am God. I'm not just a prophet. Amen. I'm not just going to my father and asking for things. I am God as well. Hallelujah. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, hallelujah, speaking of Lazarus, yet shall he live. Hallelujah. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Hallelujah. We talked about eternal life early again, earlier today. Hallelujah. We, the real us, the personality, the soul will not die. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Believest thou this? He had to ask her. She said unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ. Now she recognizes. Hallelujah. Thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should, which should come into the world. Amen. Hallelujah. His words were spirit and life. Amen. And all of a sudden, amen. You are the Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm not going to go on and read it, but he said, Lazar Lazarus, come forth. And he came forth. He had to be specific, uh, saying the word, the name Lazarus, or hallelujah, all them jokers would have came back. <laughs> hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God wants us to be aware of and to operate in the supernatural. Hallelujah. He doesn't want a dead church. Amen. Hallelujah. But a church that is operating in the supernatural. Amen. Even people getting saved is a supernatural event, occurrence. Amen. Hallelujah. Where God moves on someone who is stuck in a mindset that they're in and moves upon their heart and brings them to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Yeah, your mean old children. Amen. Uh, your mean old husband. Hallelujah. Your your mean aunt, your mean uncle, amen, hallelujah, are candidates for salvation. Hallelujah. Glory to God. They got these mentalities. They got these opinions. They got these worldviews. Amen, hallelujah. But the, the, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Hallelujah. That he is Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Next slide, please. Saints, the miracle of salvation is orchestrated in the life of an unbeliever by way of the Holy Spirit. The miracle of salvation is orchestrated or brought about in the life of an unbeliever by way of the Holy Spirit. It's his job. We merely need to allow him to minister to people through us. Amen. But it is a work of the Holy Spirit. No matter how much I argue with someone about Christ. Amen. If the Holy Spirit's not involved in turning that person's heart. Amen. It ain't going to happen. Hallelujah. It is the Holy Spirit. Well, brother pastor, how do you know that? How can you show that to us in scripture? Amen. Well, let's go about and do it right now. Hallelujah. Next slide, please. Hallelujah. This is Jesus. Amen. In chapters 14, 15, 16 and 17, Jesus, as you've heard me say over and over again, amen, is preparing his dis disciples for his crucifixion. Amen. So he's getting them right. Before he's crucified, amen, he's getting these last doctrine and these last teachings in, amen, so that they would be good, amen, hallelujah. And now he's talking about the Holy Spirit. He's called, he, he refers to him as the comforter or the paraclete, the one called alongside to help, amen, hallelujah, glory to God. So what does Jesus say about the Holy Spirit? He says, and when he has come, he will reprove, we're going to deal with that word reprove in a minute, he will reprove the world of sin. So one of the, one of the jobs of the Holy Spirit now He's speaking in a tense uh, that the Holy Spirit hadn't come yet because he hadn't. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we're looking back at this, but this is an event that's already occurred. It's the, the day of Pentecost. All right. He said, when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. 
All right, and now he explains it. Of sin because they believe not on me. Hallelujah. So what is the world's sin? Not believe, the main sin is not believing on Jesus Christ. Out of that comes all the other sins. Hallelujah. So the unbelief in Christ as Lord and Savior is the basis for all kinds of sin. Hallelujah. So the Holy Spirit, amen, hallelujah, will, hallelujah, uh, uh, will come and let the world or the unbeliever know of their unbelief in Christ. Hallelujah. He will convince them, hallelujah, their need of Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Next one, of righteousness, because I go to my Father. It's the Holy Spirit's job, hallelujah, to remind you of the righteousness of Christ, hallelujah, that is now yours as a believer, hallelujah. Or for the unbeliever, their need for righteousness, amen. For the believer, amen, hallelujah, that we are the righteousness of Christ in uh, in Christ Jesus, amen. Hallelujah, glory to God. Because I go to my Father and you see me no more, hallelujah. So Jesus is basically saying, I won't be here to teach you these things anymore, but the Holy Spirit will be here. Hallelujah. Of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. Amen. Hallelujah. Ultimately, the devil will be judged. Amen. And cast into the lake of fire. Hallelujah. But these are the this is the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's look at this word reprove. Amen. As I told you we would. Hallelujah. It says when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin to reprove. Amen. Amen. Is a uh, Greek word. El enko. Hallelujah. And properly, it means to convince with solid, compelling evidence, especially to expose, prove wrong, or connect. Amen. So the Holy Spirit, with compelling evidence, hallelujah, convinces the unbeliever that they need Jesus Christ to get saved. Hallelujah. It's not just all special effects, amen, with it. You know, it is the Holy Spirit in a way that only he can. Convincing our unsaved loved ones, the unsaved ones we want to serve in Amityville across Long Island, New York, amen, hallelujah, of their need for Jesus. Hallelujah. It's the Holy Spirit that will convince with uh, compelling evidence their need for righteousness, Hallelujah. Glory to God. It is the Holy Spirit, amen, hallelujah, that will continue to remind us, amen, hallelujah. Don't worry about the devil. He will get his. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Because sometimes we speak more about the devil than Jesus. That's just the truth. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So salvation is a work of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are all miracles sitting here right now. Hallelujah. You know what you were doing before you got saved. I know what I was doing. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. It's a miracle. It's a miracle by way of the Holy Spirit. We need some more evidence, though. Amen. Hallelujah. Next slide, please. Born of the Spirit. Born of the Spirit. We're going to take a look at Jesus' encounter with Nicodemus, this religious leader in Israel. Hallelujah. And see what he said to him. Amen. Next slide, please. This is our final slide, and we will be done for the day. Hallelujah. This is what Jesus says to Nicodemus. Nicodemus, this religious leader, this Pharisee, came to see Jesus at night. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Where his fellow Pharisees were not around. Amen where he could not be exposed, amen, hallelujah, but something Jesus taught, amen, or something Jesus, some miracle he performed, amen, had an impact on Nicodemus, this religious leader, amen, hallelujah, who thought he could get to heaven by keeping the Ten Commandments alone, amen, hallelujah, came to Jesus by night, amen, and this is Jesus' response to him. He said, "Humans humans can reproduce only human life. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. But the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. I had Cheyenne, Asa, and Raven. I was able to produce human life. God's given us the power of uh, procreation. All right? It's inherent in us. Hallelujah. But, hallelujah, they didn't come out the womb saved. Amen. Only the Holy Spirit, amen, hallelujah, glory to God, gives birth to spiritual 
life. His spirit takes residence in our human spirit. And once again, we're reconnected with God and we are saved. Amen. Hallelujah. This is why once saved, always saved. Jesus said in uh, John 14, 16, that the whole, he would give us the Holy Spirit to be with us forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Forever sounds like forever to me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So once we sincerely receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, amen, we are saved forever. And we are, hallelujah, the Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's the work of the Holy Spirit. Let me read on. Hallelujah. So don't be surprised when I say you must be born again, hallelujah, or born from above. The wind blows wherever it wants, just as you can hear the wind but can't tell where it comes from or where it's going. So you can't explain how people are born of the Spirit. It is a work that is beyond our understanding, but is a work of the Holy Spirit, amen, hallelujah. Just as the wind blows as it w will, amen, we don't see it, amen. The work of the Holy Spirit is unseen to human eyes, amen, glory to God, but it brings about, hallelujah, spiritual life in unbelievers. In our case, it brought about spiritual life in us, hallelujah. Now, let me get back to my original premise, amen. I was in a dry place. I'd heard all these opinions and all these things. I'm like, you know what? These folks are so locked in. They're never going to get saved. What, what, is it, what does it mean? That, why am I preaching the gospel? Why am I pastoring? Why am I doing all this if they're all just going to go to hell anyway? They believe what they believe. Why am I wasting my time? They don't want Jesus. The exact opposite opinion or point of view that he wanted me to have. Hallelujah. I took my eyes off of the Lord and had them on people. Anybody, I ain't got any cousins in here, that you've been looking at people. You've been frustrated by people. You've been frustrated by the news. You've been frustra frustrated by the war in Ukraine. You've been frustrated by the atrocities that have taken place over there. You, you, you've been frustrated by these young people, amen, and the choices they're making. You've been frustrated by older people who should know better and the choices they're making. Hallelujah. Pastor Brown got caught up in the mix, and God had to remind me. You took your eyes off me. Hallelujah. Put them back in me. For with me, nothing is impossible. Hallelujah. Our church growth is going to be a miracle. The salvation of our loved ones is going to be a miracle. Hallelujah. Us getting out of this great debt is going to be a miracle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Those difficult things, our body being racked in pain, us coming out is going to be a miracle. When I had COVID, amen, hallelujah, I was still taking my, and they were making sure I was taking my uh, communion every day. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And although it wasn't immediate that I got healed, amen, I God took me through the process and I was healed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Some of it I probably just needed a rest. <laughs> I've been running like a crazy man. Hallelujah. Rest. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So your miracle may not always be instantaneous. Amen. But God's going to do it. We've been in this wilderness for a long, long time as a church. I'm declaring and decreeing based on the word of God, not on some, uh, just me being, uh, what's the word I'm going to use, hallelujah, presumptuous, amen, hallelujah, that we are coming out of this, amen, hallelujah, and us being here, amen, hallelujah, or wherever you are, for those of you that are online, amen, in your life, amen, won't be like this always, that God, hallelujah, has more in store for us, amen, and before his son comes back, we got to see millions of people come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. If it's not about the salvation of others, I'm wasting my time. I'm here for no reason. Amen. All of us in here have heard a million sermons. Amen. Glory to God. Throughout your salvation. Amen. We're saved. We're going to heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. Now it's time. Hallelujah. Glory to God. For us to allow the Holy Spirit to move and to create opportunities where we see 
thousands of people come to the saving knowledge. If not, I didn't mean I didn't put a cap on it. Millions of people, amen, maybe through this church, come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And it will be a miracle. It will be a work of the Holy Spirit. Our mission is about seeing souls come to Christ. Amen. Whether it be on your job, whether it be in your family, whether it be in whatever situation, or whether it be in, in the person laying next to you in bed, hallelujah, your husband or your wife, hallelujah, we want to see them come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. He is soon to return. The signs are there. The signs are there. Amen. Hallelujah. And it is not through our five senses that we will get this revelation, but it is a revelation by way of the Holy Spirit to our spirits that we will move forward and see God do a mighty work. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm in I'm reinvigorated. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's put a new fire in me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. And we are going to see Amityville transformed in Jesus' name. Amen. Not because it's something that Pastor Brown just had a bright idea or he just wants to see his bright idea come to pass. My idea, my my thoughts and my opinions are worthless. Hallelujah. It's what thus saith the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. And this is just a us being here in this building is just a foretaste of the wonderful things that God wants to do. Help is on the way. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And we're going to see God do a mighty work. For nothing is impossible with God. End it right there. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you for joining the Living Waters Christian Center. We hope the message blessed you and unveiled the love of Christ in you in a greater way. God bless.